6 o'clock news. <laughs> On this episode of Entertain the Geeky, myself, Chris Parsons, Joe Moore, and Roger Moss are going to tackle games, both video, board, RPG, I guess it's more than both, but it's, it's more a than lot. Two. TCG? TCG, anything that anything that we can get our hands on, um, we're gonna we're gonna explore some of that right now. So for those of you that have w- listened to the other two episodes, this is kind of how it's gonna go. We like too much geeky stuff to try to talk about in one episode, and honestly, it's better this way that we have episodes dedicated to subject matters that we like. Or that that we, you like, so you can skip through the shit that you don't want to hear. Exactly. Don't you, like comics, but you like board games. All right, this episode's for you. The last one wasn't. You don't like movies? We can't really help you. Yeah, you're a lost cause. Um, video so, games, we're going to touch on some of that too. Well, E3 was this week. Yeah. E3 was this week, and some really big announcements came out for video games. Um, Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild. The redo of, of, of Skyrim. Yeah, the yeah. HD mastering. Really? You're going to on that? Everybody's already fucking played through it. So I, I have agree. I'd rather they work on Skyrim like, 2. The the next Elder Scrolls. And please don't make it Skyrim 2. Please give me Valentine. Well, no, I, I talked to my uncle about it. Because he's like, yeah, he's like, it looks cool. But I've already played Skyrim to yeah. death. You know, here's the thing, though. Like, <coughs> I, I'm one of the one percenters that haven't beaten Skyrim. But my brother and I had this... Mm-hmm had this conversation about about video games versus movies and, and the slew of Hollywood remakes we're getting and how we would actually be okay with video games being redone with the graphical and controller enhancements that we've had in the past 30 years. Well, if you're talking like Ocarina of Time or something like that, absolutely. Um, but it, there's... But you've got Skyrim. Skyrim is too recent. Crash Bandicoot getting redone. Crash Man. Bandicoot, nah. Um... Call of Duty Four, which is the only like, reason people are going to buy Infinite Warfare. I mean, there it's it's another Call of Duty. It, it's, yeah, I don't need but that. we're starting on that on that cusp now of games getting redone. I mean, who here wouldn't play Metal Gear Solid One redo uh, for a third time? I wouldn't. I wouldn't. You all suck. Metal Gear Solid One. Now, is like, hold awesome. on, hold on. Though, if they said, "Hey, we're going to redo N sixty four's Goldeneye." Um, oh yeah, no, I I'll buy six copies. They, yeah. they they did that already. No, they didn't. Yeah. Goldeneye Rogue Agent, and it was bad. That I have no idea what you're talking about. Now you're saying things like they remade Ninja Turtle movies. That they never did. happened. Michael Bay did it. Unfortunately, it Who's happened. Who's Michael Bay? He's the guy that made a really good movie called Bad Boys <laughs> and The Rock, <laughs> and, then and they that's about everything. it. And yeah. then they were like, here, take Transformers. This is one of the greatest properties we could ever give to somebody. Oh, Let's uh, not talk about Michael Bay. Run this into the why, ground. Why are we talking about movies here? Let's talk about actually games and what matters. Okay. Games so, it so, is. so what's got you excited coming out of E3, Chris? Nothing. I, it, it, okay, I'm not the biggest video gamer. Um, I am a PvPer. So right now, like I'm playing a lot of Destiny. I'm ready for uh, the new Iron Lords expansion or whatever the hell they're calling it to come out. Um, I want the new PvP. Uh, and I don't think they're throwing any new mechanics into the PvP or anything like that. It's just I like playing against other players. But if you pre-order, you get a you get a cool Galhorn, Galhorn. and I am going to pre-order it and get my Galhorn um, that I'm probably not going to use. But I'm going to have it, and that's all that matters. I'm going to have that digital gun rocket launcher <laughs> to uh, to know that if I wanted to use that, if you I wanted really to piss could. everyone off. Yeah. Um, and then Overwatch. I mean, Overwatch. It's it's a PvP game. I love it. All right, Joe. What about you? What has you excited out of E3? <laughs> uh, Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild, which I know they've been talking about for a while, but like the fact that we got a final, like an actual trailer, we got to watch a bunch of actual play on Twitch. Um, like, I'm just super pumped about this. I, I grew up on the Zelda games. Like, I. I'm a Nintendo boy when it comes to video games, um, and Legend of Zelda is my bread and butter. Now, is this is this just a Wii U game, or is it coming out on the rumored NX? Uh, it will also be on the NX as well, which is supposed to come out late next year. So I didn't I didn't catch the Nintendo E3 anything from Nintendo. Do we know anything about the NX? Um, Do we care? There's not a lot I personally saw. I didn't pay super close attention. My apologies to anybody who was hoping for cool stuff. Um, I didn't pay a super amount of attention to it. Um, I just I saw the trailer for Breath of the Wild, heard NX is coming out next year, Our, and, and freaked out. Is, is yeah, Nintendo that's, that's gonna get with the program and start using like an AMD chipset so we could get some cross-platform gaming through them? Maybe 
Uh, you know, I don't I, know. I, uh, I missed that. I'm not... I wouldn't be super surprised if for no other reason than you pretty much already have and have had cross-platform gaming from them, like, through um, the the Wii Store. Like, the, the, the Nintendo Wii Store, like, on the consoles. But... Cross platform. I mean, I can play with a PlayStation guy. Oh, okay. They don't have that, that. Okay. Well, uh, Microsoft like the, doesn't have that. They, they, Microsoft. No, 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 that is something. Sony don't that's have that right now. That's something that's being integrated right now. Right. And there are several games that they're working on that on. But I would love. I wouldn't uh, honestly if if Microsoft and Sony start playing nice and they start having that kind of cross platform thing. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if Nap- Nintendo was just like, yeah, sure, because they've that's, always just been about the players. It's the next step for video games, though. Like, yeah. Uh, is it? Yes, absolutely. Then why do we have two different consoles? We don't. Because we companies have, we like have, money? We have way more than that. No, I mean, okay, this was something that I was going to touch on when, when I touched on my favorite thing about E3, which is console exclusivity. There, okay. Back in the day, back in the heyday, I don't know, when were you born, Chris? 89. Joe? 90. Okay, so you're a little bit too young to remember this, but 93, 94, 95... There was this big thing called Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo. Very familiar. Yes. And and it was a console war. Yeah. And you would go to your friend's house and you'd play the Super Nintendo and get so stoked for Star Fox and Super Mario and, yeah, and, and, and these games. And then you'd go home to your Sega and you realize, I have these games they don't have. The, the console war didn't stop there. Like, that went no, on. that's ongoing. Yeah. Still. But, it, but it, it's, like, it's simmered down. They, they still have plenty of exclusives. Yeah. PS4 and then, has, like... 19 yeah, different well, exclusives I mean, even, coming even, in the next Well, no, and, that, and that's what I'm saying is we're seeing a return to that. I was going to say, even when you look at Destiny, like Destiny, Xbox, PlayStation, they both have it, but there are PlayStation exclusives in the game. You've got a Jade Rabbit, different different right. weaponry and stuff like that. I personally would rather have less of that and just have a stronger gamer community as a whole. It, I wouldn't start having having this war of, oh, I'm better because I've got an Xbox One. Yeah. Oh, I'm better because I I've would, got a PS4. I oh, think oh it, look, I'm PC Master Race. Well, I don't well, need well, that. PC guys will never, ever come down to our level of talking of talking about consoles. Because they're PC douchebags and they've been that way that's since fine. That's, not that's fine. True. I will I will buy my console and then still be able to order a pizza because I didn't spend thirteen thousand dollars on every two years. Computer. Yeah, it is true. It is true. Con- PC they, gamers are know, the elite. I know. I know PC gamers that are console gamers as well. Really, they're they're the rarity. No, they're not. A lot of people do that. I used to play WoW. I we feel know. like it, it's it's pretty regular. They're still douchebags. Not there. There is the the hardcore PC gamers that like that is all they play. And but that's I know fine. Most of the gamers I know have at least one, if not two, consoles plus their PC. You're, she's smiling at us. Tara, my fiance, is tuning in, but and, and laughing at us. I, I think the it, you, you want to come better in and say hi. I, come on in, say hi. I don't say think hi. it's gonna happen. Hi. Oh. 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 See, There's he, a girl on the show. What? <laughs> High five for something that never will happen. Uh. <laughs> so I think the I think the biggest issue though is we look at like Spider Man. Yep. That game looks amazing. Amazing. I'm gonna have to buy a PlayStation Four. I'm not. I'll. You watch, are the biggest Spider Man fan. I, know. I will watch somebody else play it in a video. I can I can like the game for that. Like. Did you, you see? Can it? Get your jollies yeah. just watching it being played. Yeah. Come on. I, see, fine. I'm not. I'm not the biggest video gamer. Like I said, that game's yeah. not going to have a PvP aspect. That's why I play games. Well, that's fair. I want to play against yeah, other people. MMO but you, guy. But you I, hate Call of Duty. Hate Call of Duty. Um, hate I, Battlefield. It, it's all the same. It's not. Battlefield is so good. They're all the same. I I want to play the new Battlefield, Battlefield but only 1. because when how often do we ever get anything that's World War One? Now everything's we always games. like World War Two. But now you're getting two games coming out. All, right. all the consoles for Verdun's coming out and Battlefield One. Yeah. And I saw Verdun and it looks amazing. Right. And like it's I, more trench warfare than, than Battlefield One looks. Right. Not for me. And and I'm super <laughs> impressed by the fact that we're doing something with World War One instead of World War Two or Are the future or the, or the future. The future. The like, future I don't wars. need the not so distant future anymore. Yeah, I'm um, done with that. I mean, unless you're giving me a Star Trek war game that is the eugenics war, I don't care. Though, though I will say, Bridge Commander looks amazing. And, and and that seemed to be the big thing that came out of E3 was the new VR game. 
games. Yeah. yeah. The virtual reality is making a big push. It's we, the future. We are getting so close to having holodecks, I can taste it. <laughs> I might be alive to see this. <laughs> you might be alive to be William Riker. Right. Oh my god, I'm so excited. You know how many different wo- women and aliens I'm going to sleep with in the holodeck? It's going to be amazing. Uh, and no less than wife, 127. The wife is going to be so upset about all this. I, why? It's, it's fake. Why? She can have it's masturbation. <laughs> <laughs> really? Okay. Hey, that's all it is. It's just yeah, masturbating. It's, it's VR porn. Right. Okay. You guys. But that's VR a whole porn. different moral issue that I'm not going to get into right now. Why not? Because we've got other things to talk about. Not really. No. Uh, yeah. We. I, I. I. really will put I, the show I, on hold for yeah, your issue with VR Let, porn. Let's do this. I don't have an issue with VR porn because I just don't care. This is where it's to going. Have VR porn. Like, 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 like. Let's be honest. We're 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 all quasi adults here. Sex industry and pornography <laughs> will take over virtual reality. Of course it will. Um, Half the reason Blu-rays and DVDs succeeded as a medium was because the porn industry got in onto it. The whole reason VHS The only reason the internet was took because off is porn. because of porn. Yeah, yeah. the internet. Yeah. Prime <laughs> example. Yeah. 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 I like, can't type in anything no, without I, seeing tits. Like the, the porn industry is a solid industry, and generally whatever they end up backing is very successful because of it. I have no problem with this. So I don't have a problem with the porn industry whatsoever. But is it cheating? I just is virtual reality holodeck porn cheating? I, because you are you aren't just you, laying you know, in bed fair. with a magazine. All right, you're all fair, right, I guess. Right. Whatever. It, if, it's weird. It, it's weird. I can't wrap my head around it yet. <laughs> it, it can. It isn't necessarily just by existing. So, what, but it can be. What if like on. if you stop paying attention to like your spouse, the the, the person you have bonded yourself to for this instead and you grow an emotional attachment to this especially like then yeah no you're fucking cheating so but if on. you're just like occasionally getting your jollies off like no you're but what, if, what if what if it's like this okay so what if uh you are on one side of the planet and Susie is on the other side of the planet okay and you can virtual reality fuck each other is that cheating? Not long distance relate. Well, are, are you I are you in a relationship I, with Susie? No, I don't know. Like you have See, a spouse, that, you have a spouse. Not, you're masturbating at somebody else. Not necessarily <laughs> just because of what it is. <clears throat> it all comes down to the the uh, like morality that is in play in that situation at the moment. It's very so subjective. everything's going to be situational. There, yeah, so it's except it, excessively situational. Everything is like you can't just blame this all for this it it is always situational but i can finally bone scarlett johansson i mean yeah sure fine i mean i mean honestly cool. i'm gonna get a lucy Lou bot just because i love futurama that's not even for sex though no at that point <laughs> i'm just entertained <laughs> <laughs> i just want to hear her say my name in a super robotic voice so but... tell me more about the pizza <laughs> <laughs> I hear you ordered Imos because she can't say Imos. No, it's Imos. Well, well, if I'm ordering that, somebody shoot me because I'm a doppelganger. Wow. Joe's not an Imos fan. Uh, well, I, we, we're, we're St. Louis natives here. Uh, um, Provel cheese does not impress me. I love it. All right. It's delicious cheese. I love it. It's okay. Imos sucks, but the cheese is good. I the cheese is Imos, fine. But like Imos pizza is okay. I'm, I'm not a thin crust guy. I'd rather get not a thin crust guy. If I go there, I'm getting one of their subs. I'm a thin crust kind of boy. No, I like... I, I like it thick. It's fine. I no, love it. Thick, I, I chewy bread. Prefer hand. Emos does a fucking thick want, crust pizza. It's not the same. No, it isn't. You need hand tossed New York style with giant pieces that are like a quarter of the pizza. I want to fold it. I don't give a my fuck man about folding. If you can't turn it into a taco, it's, it's not, not a pizza. pizza. Right. So Sabaro counts. Yeah. I, well, it's no, not I, the best. I like Sabaro. Yeah, Sabaro counts. But you have to douse it in Parmesan cheese. I mean, that's fine. I like Parmesan. You know what I found out? Oh. You know that, that, that Sakaru or... How did it talk about video games turn into pizza? Hold on. This is important. You know, you know that Sakaru at the mall? The the the, the, uh... the new pizza place? No, no. Sakaru. They make the uh, chicken teriyaki crap. Yeah? S- yeah, you know Sabaro? that... No, no. Sak Aru. I don't know what you're talking they about. They make right chicken right teriyaki. Everybody Nobody makes fucking chicken it's teriyaki. It's not Japanese. Okay. The, the fucking company came out of fucking Canada. Right. It's not even a real Japanese word. Panda Express, motherfucker. No, that's like cheap Chinese. It's not cheap Chinese. That's an American food. Some, yeah. some, some Chinese, Chinese food is Some an Chinese food. immigrant was like, I'm going to start a food company. It wasn't a Chinese immigrant. 
I thought they were no. I, I they were surfer had, guys in California. I thought it was an Asian family because no, I read some, I read some bullshit no, on no. one of their uh, signs in the no. restaurant one day. No, that's marketing for you. Yeah, <laughs> God, they got me, those fuckers. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know how Anyways. we went. We okay. Well, it started with VR porn, and it after did. sex, you want food. You want pizza? <laughs> no, I want I want a nap. After and then food. What? No, the cold, dude, the cold fried chicken after sex is the best. Mm, That's how I, I want to look like first. this. I want it. Yeah, I don't want to look Roger's like massaging his midsection. It's quite His happy. large, Java-shaped midsection. It's not um, really Java-shaped. So, okay. To Anyways. Keep, to keep things going in the right direction, um, video games are a thing. Uh, some of virtual us play the virtual reality. Virtual is reality thing. is definitely becoming a real, real thing. Uh, what I don't need out of virtual reality is horror games, you like know, fucking like Five Resident Nights at 7? Freddy's or whatever the hell people are doing. Here, here's the problem with that idea. Like, I like horror games, but if like it gets too real at any point while I'm playing a horror game, like I can easily remind myself that like I'm in a room. This is a game, right? You're stuck in a virtual reality headset while an alien's trying to eat your face. You can't escape that. You, you take it off. Literally. Yeah. You fucking take it off. Yeah, nobody does that in those panic because moments. Because have you seen it? Yes, have I've watched seen... this. I, I want to see you pull this off. Give me a fucking virtual reality Go thingy. buy one and we'll do this. I'm not buying one <laughs> because I think they're stupid. Like Tara, buy him one. I second Joe. I'd be too scared and I'd be too scared to even remember to take it off. So... Uh, you know, I'm backed by a woman. Does that mean my argument wins? I, I mean, it means aliens. I can't argue with you. Especially no, aliens. Not if you want yeah. sex later. <laughs> no, if it was aliens, it would be terrible. I would completely forget. I would have a panic attack. I would die inside a virtual reality helmet if it was aliens. What about zombies? No, she zombies, can't do aliens. Zombies, zombies I would just get pissed off and I'd smash the helmet. Zombies are stupid. Uh, that's my opinion. <laughs> I have a secret <laughs> hatred for zombies. I don't think I, I, I share loves this it. hatred. Yeah, Chris zombies I, are bullshit. They're they so are. stupid. Uh-huh. Um, and yeah, they're, they're super overplayed. I can't get into it. But Resident Evil. I don't care. And it's the original zombies. I don't care. I mean, it also turned stuff. into aliens at some point. Did it? Yeah. yeah. I quit playing. Did you three. see Resident Evil Four? The movie? No. no. The game? No. Fuck no. Okay. No, okay. So, yeah. No. It was aliens at that point. Okay. It, it turned yeah. into Animorphs. Th- th- thanks for virtual reality, guys. Um, we just don't want to see horror games? So, RPG... Just porn. R- just you porn. just want the fucking porn. I, I don't, but... I don't care about I, I'm having to sex out, with an alien. But I'm trying to figure out why we care about virtual reality. I don't. Because it's They're, the next step to being immersive. Thing, it, it's the same reason people play RPGs or any game, really, um, that involves your full-on interaction. Like, you're looking for an escape from reality for a time being. So you can be a hero... Or someone different, just so you can enjoy something and not worry about the real world. But that, that, that's virtual an RPG. Re- I mean, that's an RPG. Yeah, but virtual reality is the next step into turning video games into that. Like, you are more immersed into this. Uh, especially yeah. the ones where you have to, like, are standing but are we and ta- you actually have to, like, are, run on a platform. Are we taking away from imagination with that? Because, like, I, I, I enjoy our no, D&D sessions. I'm, I'm um, going to say you're not taking away from imagination. Okay, fair well, enough. Well, well, Lar- largely because, like, you still get to do whatever you want in these things. And somebody had to imagine it in the first place, otherwise I wouldn't have well, done yeah, it. yeah, some dude did, but the masses don't. Like, I, I, there, there's a very attractive well, thing. Well, that's what you have custom creation and mods for. Like, I you, guess so. You, you I can guess change so. it I don't, as I, a person. I'm not a modder. That's fine. I'm not a modder. The game is what it is when it comes out. You patch it, you fix it, and that's the game. That's, part that's of the reason I'm I've always that's... preferred tabletop RPGs to video games because i can create that world from the ground up well no and that's that's what's attractive about it like i'm playing a character right now in an rpg that's a stoner and i'm a far cry from a stoner um so yeah get out of here. <laughs> you're just one doobie away I, I, everybody is I one doobie away from me i, I can't get it I, I i don't like it he uh, tried really hard. He gave it good effort, and it just wasn't his thing. It's not for me. <laughs> I understand this. Like, I know how my brain works. It already kind of races. But you, as a druid, love the shit out of some shrooms. I do. It's so much fun. And, like, I get to skip perception checks all the time because my character's stoned. And I'm like, I'm on my own little world. I don't need to roll a perception check. Right. Uh, so it, it's a blast. And, like, I get to I get to be the short chubby stocky little druid with ugly dru- little dwarf druid so you're dreadlocks me. huh you're me without the dreadlocks well, if roger you you're like six he, two imagine if john was a like had a bulbous nose and ate shrimp you can't make john ugly 
Yeah, I can. No, yeah, you can. Perks is, will always be cute. I'm sorry, it's true. I mean, he's pretty cute on this. I love John Perks, <laughs> but we could make him ugly. You could turn anybody ugly. Give me some special effects makeup. I'll yeah. make him ugly. I have no fucking clue what nope. I'm doing. Do you know why? Do you know why? Because his eyes will still be magnificent. No, we can fix that. Yeah, you put contact lenses yeah. on them bitches. We'll They'll shine shit through. Right no, they will shine no. through. No, no I yeah. can fix it. Yeah. I'll make them shit brown real easy. <laughs> I'll just turn them white. Just pupils. Bloop. So now we're talking about people that nobody even knows. Uh, John Perks, manager of the St. Charles Fantasy Shop. Yep. Uh, I think he's on his way to general manager, isn't he? Uh, I don't know and can't talk about it. He doesn't know and can't talk about it. John Perks, sweetest man in the world. Um, dreads and beard for days. Yeah. He's a hippie. I love yeah, him. Yeah, we love a hippie. That one. That <laughs> hippie. Anyways. Uh, no, but like... Uh, that. But yeah, that, that's why I've always preferred RPGs. It's well, a more interactive world. Um, speaking much more of RPGs... You can build it up from however you want it to be. We just had free RPG day. We did! Which, for those of you who don't know, they have two, two big events a year at, at, at comic shops. Free comic book stores. day. Free comic book day, which was last month. Yep. May first uh, week, well, first Saturday three, of May. Three big events. What? Free comic book day, free RPG day, and then international tabletop day. Ooh, international Ooh, tabletop yeah, day. That's a new one. Yeah, that's a yeah. beautiful that, one. That is though. a newer one from um, the the guys who own and operate Geek and Sundry. But it is a day specifically awesome. to celebrate board games. It's fucking awesome. And so, and that was a pretty big success this year. So with free RPG day. Like I've always felt with role playing games that they are the, the the backbone and also the hidden gem uh, of ga- the gaming hobby. Yeah. Whereas yeah. you hear about D and D and everyone has has knows of D and D. Yeah. But it's it's yeah, the, the massive the role devil playing game. While we're well, playing it. Of course we do. Yeah. No. What uh, is I'm su- I'm summoning Satan in yeah. in your basement. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And then you get lost in some school's steam vents. Our sewers. Yeah. Thank you, Tom Hanks. Yep. But it seems to me that like role playing games have always been the backbone of the hobby industry, but also that kind of redheaded stepchild. Yeah, yeah, of... because they they have that stigma from from the early '80s where they were decried, and they've never been able to really shake that off. And and like to the mass media for the longest time, they've always had that like, oh, it's played by lonely fat dudes in their 40s well, in their parents' basement. That's one of the things uh, working at the fantasy shop. Like, I had some dude come in from Gold's Gym that was he was this fucking ripped redhead guy i'm pretty sure the guy was bulging out of his shirt the guy was stacked and he's like i need to get into D D five when do you play D D?" and i'm like fucking wednesday <laughs> <laughs> fucking Wednesdays. wednesday when do you play D D? i live D D. no <laughs> so it, it, it was cool it was cool because you've got this dude that does not fit the build for what an rpg player right, is not what you were coming in to do it well, uh I think it's it's kind of that thing of now we've grown as a, as a society where our little nerd things used to be us not getting laid to where everyone is do, is doing either comics, video games, or some yeah. sort of some it, sort of gaming. It, it is much more wildly accepted by the masses. So now. really, with Free RPG Day, what did you guys do? Like, what was your big thing? Uh, our our big thing um, that I personally ran actually uh, recently. Um, D and D released a new uh, adventure supplement, um, which is which was Curse of Straw. It's awesome. It, it's it's a uh, major vampire story, um, and and horror campaign that the characters have to go through and deal with this uh, Count Strahd von Zorovich, um, in his realm, like in a land you cannot escape. No, um, this is just a redo of the original 80s Ravenloft, right? Yeah, um, it, it is a, a reboot, basically, um, which I was super pumped about because I always considered the original Ravenloft to be the best thing that ever happened, supplement-wise, with the Ever. And, and they got uh, the original writers to come back and redo it for fifth, and they added a few new elements and changed up the gameplay and stuff. And there was an introductory adventure for it called Death House, um, that would put characters in the world, and you would go through a house of horrors that would change and is alive and pretty creepy. And I ran uh, a group that through shit. it on, on Free RPG Day. I personally have two groups um, that I'm running through all of Curse of Strahd. Yeah, I'm, in, I'm in one of them, and it's a blast. Joe makes us play by candlelight. Yep. It's kind of romantic. Um, a little. Little. Uh, <laughs> 
we that whisper sweet wine. nothings into each other's ears as we play. Yes. Uh, and my character is on shrooms or smoking weed um, constantly. So yeah. it's it's so much fun, and Joe allows it. To and smoke I, weed? I allow his character to be a druggie. Yeah, my it's character fine. can be I a I can use that against him. He does use it against me. So what else? Okay, so we got Ravenloft. What's yeah. Pathfinder doing now? Uh, Pathfinder right now, their their biggest uh, release lately was um, God, I can't remember the full name of the book, and I apologize for that. But it was uh, based on more on social combat than actual combat. It nice. Was, it was based on um, developing social skills and diplomacy, and dealing with high society and secrets and stuff. And it actually had a new build for characters where you could basically build Batman, the vigilante. So, so you're telling me 3rd edition finally got social skills? Yeah. And, and is, is it still just rolling a d20 and adding bonuses, or does it actually make I mean, you it's play? Math Finder, so it, it involves a, quite a bit of rolling, of course, but there is quite a bit more um, actual role-playing involved in, in that. Um, now, what about some of the indie press? What are we getting from that's not... You know, Pathfinder, D and D fifth. Um, one of my personal favorites uh, that's been coming out over the years is a series of books called End of the World. Um, oh. Each one revolves around a different apocalyptic scenario. The the first of which they released the ever popular zombie apocalypse, um, which was then followed by one called Wrath of the Gods, which had several different scenarios in it, following different religious uh, themed. Apocalypse. Didn't we get a robo apocalypse with that as well? Uh, that that is the next one coming in a few months. Um, there will be a robot apocalypse where the singularity happens and you end up with terminators and stuff. Zach uh, is going to be terrified. Yeah, he is. Um, but there there was also one that was based around alien invasion. It was uh, Independence Day or War of the Worlds, what have you, in a role playing aspect. And those I really like because you like the scenario starts always as like you and a group of friends sit down to play a board game or an rpg and then this happens you're playing as yourself in this scenario which i thought was really cool yeah the item to your left you... is what you get to use yeah Go. That, that is not something that often happens in rpgs unless somebody custom builds something where you are yourself you have to actually act as yourself in these situations or as you want to act and your only supplies or whatever is actually in the room or in your pocket or whatever yeah that's interesting. I mean, I, I'm more of the stay away from the fantasy role-playing games, and I like to hear about what's out there that's not. You know, okay. D&D or Pathfinder. Okay. I mean, I love 5th Edition. I think 5th Edition is... It's amazing. ...been the best D&D that we've had in a long time. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm one of the few people that actually will stand up and support 4th Edition. And The board game edition? No, Yeah, the board game. I'll stand up and I'll, I'll defend the board game, and, and I can discuss where WotC screwed up on that. But... For me, Pathfinder represents the evils of 3rd edition and a really bad time for gaming. Yeah, it, it is nicknamed Mathfinder for a reason. Um, it, it, in my opinion, is too cold and calculated and all about rules. Well, it was made by rules lawyers for rules lawyers. I feel so bad for the dudes that play it because they won't leave it. Like, yeah. they're, they're so invested in this shit. And it's like, dude, there's a great fucking 5th edition here. Yeah, You pick up a couple of books edition. and you're golden. Well, it's not 3rd edition. It's That's their problem. It's, In my opinion, it's better. It's and part better. of the reason I love 5th edition is 5th edition is basically how I've always played anyway. It's, it's written. It's, sim it's simple. It's streamlined. And but it's, it's still it's, complicated. It, it isn't. I mean, there is... There, they, Maybe they one took, thing in 5th edition They took them... Uh, just, there's a bunch. Maybe but we'll save thing. that for a different conversation. <laughs> but what, what, what they've done with 5th edition is they, they've taken the 4th edition math, which was the symbolized math, and they added it to the 3rd edition backbone you know and it, it's that's very fair. interesting how they did it and it works i think it works fantastic it's good. i mean it it's mostly just simple rolls of the d20 occasionally a couple other die for damage here yeah. or there but otherwise it's all based on just role playing like you are presented with a situation do stuff and that is something that D, D has been missing for a while i mean D, D is the game where we're supposed to delve the dungeon get the treasures save the princess move on right and Fifth edition has that, but it also has that epic world building, apocalyptic feel. I mean, the first one was what Horde of the Dragon Queens. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And then the, the dragon gods were going insane. And then we had the Underdark, mm -hmm. and now we're in Ravenloft. Yeah, 
So and, like D and D is doing awesome, and these are just storybooks. They haven't released fine. supplemental material. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like there's not a monster manual too. I don't, I don't think no. they need to though. They no. will I, eventually, they eventually, eventually, I'm sure. But they, the game's in such a good place right now, and they've got. I, I mean, mean, part part of what I like about it with being so simplistic is between like the monster manual that you have, and then the the DM guide and the simple overlay. Like, there's not if there's a creature you come up with that's not in the monster manual. Super simple to make that creature inside of like 15 minutes. Well, that and this, easy. This is easier for. Uh, somebody that's new to role playing to get into. Well, yeah, oh, it's, yeah, it's absolutely. not like when you were a kid and you walked in and you saw AD and D Second Edition and you saw the massive tomes that you'd have to right. invest in to yeah. play this game. Yeah, it's now I buy a player's handbook, the DM buys two other books, and we pick one of these three settings and we get to play in it. Yeah, you get a group that invests in these three books. Maybe even the beginner box if you have no experience whatsoever, which is good. And and it's then fine. you just go for it, which I mean. Doesn't often happen. I mean, when, when I got into D and D, it was right around the time Third Edition came out, and I only learned because me and my brother picked up um, the the beginner box for Third Edition, and it managed to explain it well enough to us. And it was at the beginning of Third Edition to where it hadn't become crazy yet, so it was easy for me to follow into. If if it had been a couple of years later and we were already at three point five, I probably wouldn't have started playing. Well. Wow. That, that was, was way too much going well, on. Well, 3.5, they, they, they tried to hit the reset button without hitting the reset button. I mean, there's, yeah. there's always, with RPGs, though, there's always been really good one-off stories that you could pick up here yeah. or there. Yeah. Uh, so I, to say that you have to go with Pathfinder or D&D or one of these huge, you know, right. huge, huge I mean, thing, there, these huge entities that there, there are. There's plenty of other ones, too, that you can try out. But there, there's Fantasy Age, which is just a... Pool of three d sixes for yeah. everything. And then there, there, well, like I mean, there's that's, that's what Iron Kingdom is. Run. Iron Kingdom yeah. is the same thing. D sixes. Uh, yeah. And that's mostly combat based. And, and, so. and then there, there's even like the the fantasy flight Star Wars ones. If you're a big fan of Star Wars, yeah. like those those die aren't even like rolling numbers. You're rolling successes and failures. Like it's basically pluses and minuses. Well, and then uh, what's the other one where you get to make a superhero? Champions. Champions. Yeah, Champions. Champions is an awesome one. Uh, Marvel. Did a few, mm-hmm. um, a few years back. I, I can't remember what they're called for the life of me. Superhero, Marvel superhero. Is that what it was? The Marvel superhero role playing game. Oh yeah, well, I yeah. know. I know, Roger. You're a gigantic fan of the Deadlands stuff. I am. I'm not a gigantic the, fan the of Savage Worlds. Uh, even yeah, even Savage Worlds. But I, I prefer old school Deadlands. That's but what, I, see, I I had a blast playing no, that one Deadlands New War game with you. I, think, I never played that system ever. I think we're on a cusp of, of an explosive RPG. That we saw in the 90s with 3rd Edition coming back around. Yeah. But the fact is, it's not going to be like it was with just one system. Like, you've got Star Wars now re- rebooting with its own system. Yeah, no, we're, we're going to have another explosion, in my opinion, much like we did with the White Wolf stuff in oh the my. early 90s. Yeah, and I and think... We're, we're right there again. And that would be great to get those back. Things like that back. So because really good time. I, I Joe wants Vampire those back. And, well, I miss Vampire and Werewolf well, like no other. Well, they have them now. I mean, you just got to play in that new world that they made. That's fair. But I miss the old one. Call of Cthulhu. Call of Cthulhu is a game that's never going to leave. Never. Yeah. No, they're on 6th edition, 7th like edition seventh. right now? 7th edition. Isn't it? Yeah, 7th edition. It's, it's basically the same game, right? Yeah, I mean, like, they just keep adding stuff. They really. keep adding stuff, I mean, like, working out old rules. It's More always just, them. I mean, it always Subtle improvements boils down to just, like, percentage die rolls but if you if really you read easy. first edition and try not to go call crazy. it cthulhu and then you like just yeah. read through first edition and then read the new edition you will see why they've made the changes right no their their changes are small ones like all right like this was a problem that we noticed like let's try to fix it and then like slowly working out all the kinks to where eventually we'll finally just have an edition where they'll be like all right i don't know how to make this better okay so i'm gonna ask the, these two guys and I'll, I'll weigh in on what i think the top <coughs> three role-playing games you must play Joe, go ahead. Oh, man. Uh, come back to me. Let me think about that for a moment. Chris? I mean, obviously you've got D&D 5th Edition. Um, D&D's got such a, a massive universe that they're building with that. And uh, you can you can do your own stuff with it. It's very, very player-friendly. Um, honestly, outside of that, I really don't care. Iron Kingdoms is awesome stuff. They've got a beautiful world that they've created. Uh, they've If you want to play as more of a, a bad guy... You can do the Unleashed thing. And outside of that, man, like I, there's not a whole lot that really piques my interest outside of the Marvel role-playing game. 
uh, which I've heard very mixed reviews on. It's either loved or hated. Is that um, only because you want to play Spider-Man? No, 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 no. I actually, I want to, uh, there's a build your own hero thing in it, and I want to do that. Why don't you just play Champions? Because I want the Marvel branded one. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, Joe? Um, fifth edition, because I, I think D&D has to be on the list. Like, if you haven't played D&D, you need to. D&D is beautiful. Um, and 5th edition is, in my opinion, the best thing they've ever done. And I love it. Um, from there... Uh, but I, it can be old games. It doesn't yes. have to be new games. All no, right. it doesn't have to be new. Um, it, I, I really think um, if you're looking for something with a more realistic flavor, a little more unforgiving, um, and a, a different system where you get to do a whole lot more world building than just building your character, um, I highly suggest the Game of Thrones role-playing game because you not only just build a character but you with uh your fellow players like build a house and a history um and make like a family and it's much bigger than just making a character in the background um and it's a super unforgiving system like if you mess up you're gonna pay for it you're dead okay Um, and number three my 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 third choice um an oldie uh especially for for people who like um, horror campaigns, Dread. Never heard of it. Dread um, doesn't even involve dice. It's a simple book. You honestly could do it with one one player and one game master or a group much larger than that. But it's all based around small horror campaigns. And then you need a Jenga tower. What? That's interesting. Jenga D&D? You need a Jenga tower because whenever you, as a person in this world try to do something you have to pull off a jenga block and and it's to create this atmosphere inside of this horror world that the farther you go like the worse it gets more unstable things harder it is to do these things and what happens when the tower falls uh everybody dies two ways the tower can fall either a you knock it over and you get to choose how you go out or B, you accidentally knock it over, and the DM tells you how you go out. But if the tower falls, you die. So, so the game ends basically when you die. When when a character dies, they're out completely. Interesting. And the game's over. It, it's it's built for one shots. It's not okay. built for like a long overhauled campaign. But one shots are awesome. One shots like, can like, be fantastic. I, I, I love one shots. My my introduction to D and D or RPGs rather. Right, uh, one shots, and it was I'd go to a party with some friends, and they're like, "Hey, we've got a D and D one shot, um, so we're gonna build a character right. really fast, and we're gonna play through this little campaign yeah. here." And it was, it was, it was so much and fun. I mean, that that's part of the reason I love Dread. It's very simple to set up. You don't even have to bother making character sheets. You you give someone you can give someone a personality or let them choose a personality inside a world, and it's very versatile. You can have it in a fantasy setting where you guys are dealing with. Uh, being stuck in like a cat hunting lodge that's being attacked by werewolves or I did one with a couple friends uh, a couple weeks ago where I set it up they were um, it was the movie Predators they got dropped off on a hunting planet and were being chased by predators like it's very versatile it's great Um, you can only get it online now like you have to download it as a pdf um, for like 15 bucks oh 15 okay yeah it's like 15 bucks downloadable as a pdf but that's it it's simple. Money well you just spent. run with it. Or we just have Joe print us copies of his. I mean, I could. <laughs> I mean, or we can support the people and, that and are if, doing if it you because want, that's well, important yeah. for our if you industry. Want, uh, a good example of how that game works: there is an episode of Tabletop with Will Wheaton where he plays it with a couple people. Nice. Okay. Cool. Good to know, Roger. Oh crap! My actual three. Obviously, D and D Fifth Edition. Uh, all right. We're all fifth edition. All agree. Fifth edition. Everybody play Fifth Edition. If you don't own it, just buy it and play it. Or, I mean, or come up to the fantasy shop on what? Excuse on Wednesday. me, on Wednesday nights. Any. You don't even have to know how to build a character. Get there at like five thirty. We'll help you build a character. We'll give you a pre-made character even, and just jump on a table and go. For those of you that live outside of St. Louis, any game shop should be running a fifth edition D and D game on Wednesday nights. Yep. Check with your local game stores. Check with your local game stores. Um, Find out who's on, doing it. D and D's Adventure League website. And that should tell you all the locations anywhere near you that are playing an Adventure League game. WotC really has thrown their full support behind this game. Well, what's badass about 5th uh, Edition, too, is the the community that it's built. Um, 
you don't really have the elitist that you have with a lot of games. Uh, no, everybody right, no. is super helpful, it's, and they they want other people to play. It's yeah. a mix of, of old school D and D players who played second edition, third edition, fourth edition, and a bunch of new blood. And those old guys know how close D and D came to being a thing of the past during fourth edition's debacle. Right. And they don't want to see that. They just want to welcome new people into the scene, and they're very happy to bring them. And it's very refreshing to see. My second favorite game is is a little gem. It's an indie press game. It's called Fiasco. I've heard Uh, of Fiasco. uh, Fiasco is an amazing game where you are basically playing a Coen's Brothers movie. Yeah. You you play through a Coen's Brothers movie. You you try to kidnap or heist or do whatever. And very big setup. It's it's very big setup. Very. Fun. It's a very yeah. quick, easy game where there's very little, very little to no dice rolling, and a lot of actions are, are resolved by putting your hand and pulling out pieces of paper with instructions written on them. Yep. So you're basically playing what made the Blair Witch, and we saw how much money that movie made. Yeah. Um, and then obviously I, we we talked about it. It was mentioned earlier. The all-time best game that you can ever play would be Deadlands. Any version of Deadlands, but originally the original. Obviously, the original is where it's at. Something about the original is where it's. At. He's that kid. I'm that kid. Yeah. I'm sorry. The, the the system the system was built for that game. It, it's a it's a western survival horror spaghetti, campy fun good time where you can do whatever you want in this world. Well, the, I preferred the noir version. No, but, the noir is good. But I think that's because like I'm definitely a Cthulhu kid, and the noir gives that like black and white and, with a like ambient horror feel the, the best thing about deadlands is there's now four different games that go through different time periods you've got the wild west you've got a storyline through that which led to hell on earth a post-apocalyptic game mm-hmm. then you've got a space age fighting alien game and now you have the new one deadlands noir which is this really cool 1920s 30s 40s and 50s game yeah and involving it, gangsters and private investigators and it's it just it's, it's a great. really good story like just the entire game flows very well into a storyline and i can't recommend it enough but on a side note one game that everyone should play at least once in their life is paranoia if you guys have never, I've played, never played paranoia oh, you're messing out dude paranoia is a game you just need to play well i i, I, I will agree with that everybody should play paranoia i think what everybody should kind of take from this is uh, I'm sure we've got listeners that are not RPGers, um, fucking play an RPG, shit will blow your mind. Uh, yeah, especially if you played like any sort of quote unquote RPG ish MMO RPG, and you've Warcraft, never played yeah. a tabletop RPG, you are missing the mother load, man. Just it's so good. Get some dice, find four friends, read a book, and play a game. And I think that really needs to be our motto on these type of episodes. Yeah, pretty much. I Find mean, some friends, read a book, and, and roll some dice. I, real quickly, though, as, as time evades us, let's talk about something that, that came out that's really big that Chris doesn't care about, but that would be Eternal Masters. I talk, It I mean, is super big in the Magic, Magic the Gathering world. Yeah. Like, everybody was super excited about it. Nobody is getting enough because they're doing a very small print run. It's it's smaller than Modern Masters twenty fifteen. Yeah, and yeah. it's it's pricey. I mean, like a regular pack of Magic cards is about four bucks. A pack of Eternal Masters, like on the cheapest shot side, is like twelve. I've seen it for eleven, and that was as cheap as I got it. Yep. Well, like Not my uh, exactly. my little brother was telling me about it. It it sounds like they're putting off a bunch of fucking band cards and stuff. No, no, no. no. They're cards. just they're reprinting old stuff that is <laughs> viable in modern and legacy. It's mostly legacy. Mostly legacy, which is was like it J- Jace the Mind Sculptor? Can. James Mind Sculptor. Isn't that banned in like five different formats? Except for legacy and vintage. Yeah, because you can't ban things in that. You can restrict. You can you can ban in legacy. Can you ban? Oh there, yeah, there's yeah, a difference list. between legacy and vintage. Yeah. Um, the the to me though, I felt I I, I did get a box and. I felt that by watching these packs open, and I've now opened a couple more outside of that box, it is a bigger lottery ticket. Because either yeah. you're going to open a $300 card, or you're going to throw $12 down the drain. Yeah, I mean, one of, one of my customers, like, he bought a box and got a $700 return. Yeah, which is nice. I bought a box and lost $300. Yeah, it, <laughs> like, it can go either way. But it's, that's, that's... it's definitely a lottery at that point. And, and like... Not for the casual player by any means. But I will say, if you can get a box, get a box, 
don't open it for yourself. Invite eight, fr- seven friends over draft and draft that, that thing. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. no, that is always exciting. That is where the that is where this little I, masters thing. I will shines. recommend have a f- one of those friends be pretty up and up on some of the old mechanics because otherwise you guys are going to be arguing about what this card does. For um, so get a Kevin a Freeman. Yeah, yeah, get, get a Kevin judge. Freeman. Um, that will <laughs> set you straight every time. Uh, I mean, uh, Kevin Freeman is one of our local Magic players. Uh, I think he's going to be on next week. We'll be on next week. We're actually going to do a magic themed episode. That's why I wanted to touch briefly on Eternal yeah. Masters. I'll, I'll let you guys talk more about that next week. Um, but definitely, just pick up a box and, and get some friends and draft it. I think, especially in that community, it's always about opening packs and getting valuable cards, and we forget the fact that we're playing a game. And these eternal and these masters, modern masters, eternal masters, maybe they'll continue doing them are meant for getting your friends together, popping packs, and playing this game. I mean, no, it's meant for making money. Well, that's the... <laughs> to some people. That's the... But... I mean, I mean, to wizards. Oh, no, yeah. Yeah, definitely. No, no I mean, they're, 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 they're... I mean, but I feel like they... This is... I'm looking at this wrong, probably, so forgive me, but I feel like they kind of exploit their players a little bit with some of this shit. Um, I, you know what? I That was my original it intent. Name me a company that doesn't exploit somebody somewhere but I don't to think, sell a product. I mean, it's not... Okay, it's not somebody somewhere. It's any time... Like, they've got formats that rotate more quickly now. Um, Standard does rotate quicker now. It, it's bullshit. Like, they said they did it for the players. Really, what you're doing is you're hiking prices on the secondary market inadvertently, but it happens because of how quickly these formats right. rotate. You've got it's supply and demand. We'll talk about that next week. But what yeah. I really want to say about Eternal Masters is you're right and you're wrong. Uh, what they've done is they've allowed the people to get into the ease of getting into Legacy is there now. You still are going to have to spend money on the dual lands. But Jay's a hundred dollar card is now sixty dollars. Chain Lightning a twenty dollar card is now seven dollars. These cards, the, the staples that you need to make a competitive deck. Are now cheaper. Are now cheaper because yeah. because of these reprints, and it, it allows the game to grow more than just quick rotating standard, where where it's where Watsies make their money. To eternal formats are now becoming more viable. Uh, eternal Liliana, formats, are unfortunately, the is still way to too play. expensive. Liliana is expensive, but who's to say they won't reprint her in a From the Vaults or Heaven Heaven Help Us in the new set coming out? That's fair. So I think that's that's our magic conversation for this junk juncture point. Next week, guys. Next week, we're going to dive into it, and I'm going to rip apart the community. I uh, guarantee no, it. Oh, dude, I'm if, right there if you with leave you. this episode with anything, it's that you should be playing an RPG. Definitely play an RPG. I don't know what you're doing with your life. I mean, we were going to talk about board games and awesome Star Realms, but we're quite frankly running out of time on this one. So Honestly, let's... hold on, man. No. Let's hit these motherfuckers with some board games. We've got time. Do you want to talk about board games? Let's All right, it. we'll All be right. in for the long haul. Let's on, do it. On Joe, games. L- l- let's do it like this. Joe, tell us the three games that they need to play and why, and then we'll go around the room. Uh, three games you need to play and why. Um, You need to be playing Red Dragon Inn. Damn it, Joe. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, yep. Red Dragon Inn, one of my favorite all-time games. Did I introduce you to that? Yes, you did. Yeah. Uh, real easy to get into. Really fun. Best party game. Super good party game. Um. Another game you definitely need to be playing, in my opinion, if you haven't, um, is, uh, shit, what's it called? Uh, Splendor. It is not not an overly complicated resource management game, but it's a completely different style of game from a lot of other games. That's the jewel game where you're a jewel smith, right? Yeah, basically. And, and you're, you're trying to recruit nobles to your cause and you build jewels and stuff. Like it, it is all about resource management without being ultra competitive. Is it easy? Like is it it an easy pick up and play game? I, I personally think so. Uh, most resource management games can get very complicated, very fast. Splendor. Um, I personally... Uh, learned that you can teach to a person inside of 15 minutes or less nice. very easily we we demoed it for uh geekway interesting Beautiful. so it like people i taught it to learned usually read about 10 minutes to explain the mechanics and third uh man third third is a tough choice because there's way too many good ones out there yeah but um, we got those covered that's fair <laughs> my my personal opinion, if you're not, uh, just because I have to keep horror in the game because I'm such a horror fan, um, you need to be playing Betrayal at House, House on, on the Hill. Hill. Oh my god, Joe, I love you game. for that. That is a really good, okay. excellent you, fucking you, game. You and a group of friends are basically, uh, at first, uh, Scooby in the game. 
Um, you are in a haunted house that is being built as you go um, from flip tiles. You have no idea every if you're going to run different. into a room or a hallway. And it changes every time you play it because you shuffle that deck of rooms. Um, and then eventually, one of you turns out to be a traitor and tries to murder everybody else. I'm failing. I, I've only been killed. I've uh, only can been I have killed. One more? Yeah, of it's, course. Uh, it, this one isn't a board game per se. It's just cards, but it is a personal all-time favorite. Cards argument. against humanity. I no, haven't I'm played it in a long, long time, I and I really games. need to get a group. You need a group of at least, in my opinion, eight people to Are be you able about to play to say this successfully. You have it. <laughs> werewolf, werewolf is one of my all-time favorite games. Yeah, Werewolf is a fun it, one. It, it's super simple. Everybody ends up either being a villager or a werewolf. Uh, the villagers during the quote-unquote daytime rounds are trying to figure out who's a werewolf, who isn't, and lynch and kill the werewolves. And then during the nighttime rounds, when all the villagers are quote-unquote asleep, the werewolves kill off one of the villagers. Like, that is a perfect party game. It, it is, I've it got, is. It's right I, up there with, like, uh, Bomb. Right, I plan on throwing a party for ten people, 25 show up, fuck it, let's play werewolf. Oh yeah, I've got cards for that, I've got the, the ultimate edition, we can play with up to 47. You know, that that is a really, really good game. Uh, Alright, I'm Chris? on. Uh, th yeah, I'm on this. Um, Joe, fuck you for stealing Red Dragon in. You're welcome! Uh, th <laughs> that is hands down one of my all-time favorites, so um, I am going to take Star Realms, sorry Roger. Take it, Star uh, Realms is yours. Star Realms is a deck builder. Um, you can when you when you buy a box, you're buying a box for two, uh, so it's you and another player. You can mix as many boxes as you want together and have as many players as you want. It will get unruly. It, <laughs> it will get unruly, but um, the game is so well put together. Uh, really, really good deck builder, and I'm I'm big into the deck builders. Like I have a fucking blast with them. It's it gives me my it's MTG got a hard on right fix. Now talking about them. Yeah, well, no, like it, it gives you that kind of MTG fix without being in that MTG crap. Well, and Star Realms was designed to be played in between rounds of Magic. Yeah, yeah. And, well, I mean, you can have games that last. No, I, I love Not having normally, those but it happens. builders and those LCGs where you get that TCG feel without having to collect a bunch of cards. And the second set for Star Realms just just came out yeah. about two months ago, and a bunch of expansions for it. So Star Realms is one of those games that everyone should have at least a copy of. Yeah. It's cheap, it's fun, it's competitive. Fifteen dollars well spent. Oh yeah, like yeah. Get, get just get the base set. You don't even have to buy expansions. Fucking fifteen dollars and you're set. Hours of entertainment. It, 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 days. So, I mean, shit. I've played so much game? Star Realms. Second game. Uh, oh my god. I, I thought know. you had it, Chris. I thought I did too, and I did a second ago, and then it escaped me. Um, you blew your wad on Star Wars. I really did, man. I got so excited about that, and I need to go clean my pants off. Uh, I'm going to come back to that one. I'm going to come back to that one. Roger, take it away. Ro I'll, Roger, I'll, give us a I'll, game. I'll finish up with my two. I'm sorry. All right, so first, like a game that I want to say that everyone's kind of going to moan about, the X-Files board game. I know you love that. That, that is a fantastic game. No, it's where, a very well-made game. Where you game. don't have to be an X-Files fan to play this game, which is what I was afraid of. I was afraid that you would have to be an X-Files fan to even understand or try to play this game, and you don't. It is the perfect licensed game out there in my mind because it does so well of building a game that fits in the X-Files world, but you don't have to be a fan to enjoy it. Basically, it's you and three other people Three agents and one guy playing the cigarette smoking man are the bad guy. And the agents are going around trying to solve cases to, to finish a puzzle. And the cigarette smoking man is trying to stop you by throwing out misleads, cards, and, and falsifying evidence. And doing crazy things that stop you from progressing. And it's a really good game that involves more teamwork than I thought it would. And it's just an amazing board game that has a new expansion out that I can't recommend that highly enough. Um... The second game everyone should play at least once is Formula Day, which is this European racing game where you're basically you're racing. The gear shifts are different dice that you roll. So you start at D four, you go all the way up to a D thirty. You oh got to you got to stop at certain corners a certain amount of times before you get damage. It's a fun, quick, easy game to play. That honestly, it's good for the family. And my third and final game. Now, see, that's the hard one third one the third and the final one is the hard one i really enjoyed and i'm gonna throw a bunch in there because it's the engine zombie sight ghostbusters the teenage mutant ninja turtle game coming out and what i think the army of the evil dead game evil dead 2 is gonna be like yeah any of those games 
are just amazing. Yeah, they're they're all the same basic mechanic with a different setting, feel. different feel. skin. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're really good games where it's a board game, a bunch of bunch of pretty shiny toys. I mean, they they are a hundred dollar board game, but you get your money's worth. Oh yeah, just in heavy you get plastic. A bunch of scenarios. You get a bunch of miniatures and pieces, and, and you level right. up. Yeah, it's like a little. Up. It's a role. There, there's campaigns. It is a great way to get into role playing. Yeah, it really is. You get you can it's learn a board how to, game way to role play. Right? Exactly, like Descent, another one of those type of games. Okay, I'm ready. You're ready. Go, Chris. Okay, so second game, uh, I'm gonna get shot for this one. King of Tokyo. I love King of Tokyo. King of Tokyo. Why would you get shot for that one? It's it, fun, it, easy, family. It, well, friendly. I was gonna say fun, easy, family friendly. Like I've got two little ones. Yeah. Um, I taught that to a group of people at a game night that I hosted. And that was a great night. It, it was. It, it was a good game to do. Uh, it, it, it's just, it's so simple. You're and playing it's, Godzilla. You're fu- it's fucking King of the Hill. And yeah, I love it. It's a good game. I love it. So, uh... No one's gonna shoot you over that. I, I, I was afraid of that one, I must admit, because I don't want to just take the uh, the tabletop games okay. um, and run with that. That's fair. There's a reason but, uh, tabletop's successful. That's fair. Uh, so, absolutely adore that game. Um, another one that I was really, really crazy about, uh, I'm, I'm a deck builder guy. Um... DC deck building game. Uh, yeah. So many good expansions. Oh my god, I screwed that up so bad last time I played. My uh, favorite DC deck builder, though, is the, uh, it's the one in the red box. It's the B-list heroes, basically. You get Booster oh, Gold yeah, and all the, that. The, um, uh, society one. The, it's just, exactly. Uh, you get the best fucking, it, it's just good. Like, the way it plays out is smooth. Um, the cards that you pick fucking matter. Like, that's it, it, buying cards in that is huge, and obviously because it's a deck builder, but uh, you really feel the sting of missed opportunities right. with that particular expansion. I feel like more so than the villains. Yeah, they they did a, the a much one. better job of making like spending points on cards a really really important thing. Well, and then your your character ability because in that game you're granted the character ability. Yeah. Um, I feel like that wasn't a complete handicap. If somebody picked the character that you wanted, you weren't completely getting shit on. I, right. That's another one of those skin games. It is. No, it's completely because well, like, it's a. They've done a Street Fighter one. They've done. A, There's a Cartoon Network one. Cartoon recently. Network one. Yeah. There's an NHL one, and they're all the same oh, skin. I about the NHL yeah, it's called Power Play, and it's horrible. <laughs> yeah, um, but it's the skin. I mean, it, it, it's the same game. I, I, yeah, I love the deck builders again because I, I used to play Magic. I played Standard, and it, once I finally freed myself of the cardboard crack. Um, that was a way to get the fix was the deck builders and it's anybody can play it. I, I think deck builders are, are an interesting way of the future in the sense of they're not collectible. I think they're even better. I think deck builders are even better than the living card games. Yeah, absolutely. Because it is this box that I get to play in. There's no pre-con. There's no showing up with a deck that's top, that, that's the top of the line. It's I gotta play what's dealt in front of me. It's life. It's really good. <laughs> it's real life. So what we've learned this episode for you viewers is Go out, play a game. Play a game. Get some friends over. Get Actually, some friends, sit down in a room with people and play a game. Get off your fucking phones. Preferably, in my opinion, an RPG, but I will take a tabletop I mean, game as well. I mean, we'll take real, any of these uh, type of well, games. Like, yeah, even, that's fair. Even Red just, Dragon Inn. I'm more of an RPG guy. Red Dragon Inn is it's after but, the RPG. Yeah, no. Yeah. I, if, if it's easier for you to start with an R, uh, a board you, game, play a board do game. Do you know what game all three of us totally misplayed and not even said? Which one? Flux. Flux. I can't get into it. It's the most simple card game it's in the world. I'm not disagreeing with it's that. Boring. Like it's boring. It's super easy to get into. I've just never cared. It's a great it's beginner much. game. It's boring. I'd rather play Sheriff of Nottingham. Sheriff of Nottingham, Sheriff of Nottingham is, is one that I actually considered listing in my top three because the first time I played that was actually at a uh, tabletop day. Oh. Yeah. And uh, I was I was so apprehensive to play it. I was like, this is so tacky. And I sat down and played it, and I was like. Yeah, this is no, a great super game. Good. Great game. Super good. Well, so, I guess, is this where we sign off? I think uh, so. I guess. Guys, play more games, and thank you for tuning in.